All right, guys. So a lot of people called me cheap. And by the way, I'm not one of those people that say all the time, like, oh, when people tell me things, I don't care. I've never cared. I do what I'm going to do and that's it. The answer is no. I've always cared. To the point when, when I was actually growing up, I would dress a certain way, act a certain way, and speak a certain way. Because the words people called me and told me things, it basically affected me a lot. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be liked. And eventually, it's not like that feeling goes away, but it's more like you grow in confidence over time. And then I finally realized that, yeah, I care about what people say, but what I choose to do either way can be completely different because I don't have to go based on my emotions. And what happened eventually was when people kept calling me cheap, I had, for example, so much evidence that what I was doing was working that those comments stopped mattering and then that's when I finally stopped caring. But I'm not going to say that in the beginning, I didn't care about those comments and that di didn't affect me. You know, I used to spend, I had 23 pairs of Jordans, had the fanciest clothes, a $200 book bag, and I looked like a million bucks and I was broke because I was so worried about what other people thought of me. Now today, I look like I just got out of Target and I, I'm pretty happy <laughs> with my life, okay? I'm gonna break down everything here in this video. For example, what are the reasons why people call me cheap? Also, the things I spend my money on and also how things can actually change for you if you take on this type of lifestyle. Now, the very first thing is guys, do me a favor and smash like button, I appreciate it a ton. On top of that, we have a goal to hit 500K subscribers by the end of the year, so do me a favor and also subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified because there's more videos on also investing and making your money grow. Now, the very first thing is guys, people called me cheap because whenever it came to buying clothes, believe it or not, I like to buy my clothes used. And that might sound weird, but I like buying my clothes used. And this mindset comes from two places. First, it comes from my reseller mindset. When I had all of those shoes and I had to sell them because I was broke, I was like, yo, people buy these used shoes. They don't really care. It has some value. It's the same exact thing. People pay me money. That's great stuff. So I realized like, yo, I can resell clothes all the time. So why wouldn't I just buy used clothes too? And my second reason why that is is because when I was growing up, I grew up, for example, in a third world country. So when me and my mom went to a better place with better financial gains or whatever, and I had clothes that I basically grew out of, I would give those clothes to my friends, my brothers, and my uncles, and they would accept them. So we never saw an issue with, for example, buying cheap clothes. I mean, giving people clothes or wearing used clothes, okay? Now, here's an example. You might say, Tommy, are you still doing this? The answer is yes. I'm gonna show you guys right now. Um, I spent around $180 on eBay. I bought me about nine pairs of pants over on eBay, okay? My favorite brand is called Bonobos, okay? And the idea is, I bought these shorts and it cost me around $180, nine pairs of them, okay? Now, I like quality things. I like this style. I like how they feel. I like the texture. So overall, if I pay to retail for these shorts, they go for around $90 each, $90, times nine is around $810. Meaning by me paying this 180, I effectively saved $630, okay? To me, it makes sense because I got exactly what I wanted, the quality I wanted, and it's still in amazing, pristine condition, okay? That's my mindset. Now, number two is, by the way, there's a difference between buying used clothes and buying junk. I don't like buying junk because you buy it, you wear it, it goes bad the minute you wash it. I just don't like that, okay? Now, number two is I buy used phones. All of my phones are used. I've only bought two phones that were new. The first one, my mom bought it. It was a Galaxy. Now, remember, I begged my mom for that phone. It was over $700. I don't know where she got that money from, honestly. And the year after the money, the, the, the phone was worth like half. I was like, I just wasted my mom's money. And then when I finally got my own money, I bought me an iPhone 7. The following year, it was worth less. And then I said, this is a crazy business. So I got into the phone reselling business. I was like, I'm gonna buy all these phones 
and flip it to other people and make some money. So whenever I buy phones, I cost this phone right here cost me less than two hundred dollars, an iPhone XS Max. I bought it around two three years ago, and that saved me effectively around six eight hundred dollars. To me, it makes sense. It does the same exact things as all the phones. It takes a picture, it calls, it texts. What's the big difference? Okay, doesn't make any difference to me. Now number three is. I always ask for a discount and I negotiate a fair price. Now, when I was I, when, I, when I was um, in a relationship, this would kind of be a little weird, right? Because you walk into a store and I would ask, is there a discount available, you know? And I would always do that all the time. So if I walk into H&M, I would be like, is there a discount available? And they would look at me weird and be like, yeah, we do. We actually have a 10% off thing, blah, blah, blah. Put your email here. And I would be like, okay, 10% off saved just by asking. Whenever I bought something from somebody, I would ask for a discount. Whenever I had a service I wanted to get, I would ask for a discount. And you know what I learned? People are willing to give you a discount because that's put into their margins. On top of that, what I never want to do is push somebody beyond what they can actually give me a discount for because when you get into that realm you get into the realm of for example you're gonna get a good deal once but that person is never gonna call you back they're never going to want to work with you so i would never for example have someone that has a product take advantage of them ask for a crazy discount and basically get it and then all of a sudden we make that one deal but we never make any more business okay i remember once i bought this bike my electric bike that bike was like almost $2,000. I got it for like around $480. The guy wanted somewhere like around $700. They made him crazy offers because basically people were sick or whatever. Now, I went ahead and I bought it for a little bit more than everyone was offering. And I got a very good deal. But till this day, I could probably call that guy. And if he has something available, he'll reach out to me because you want to make good deals. But I didn't pay $2,000. I paid four eighty, dollars And I saved me a lot of money just by negotiating. Number four. I buy tickets. When it comes to plane tickets, I buy them in advance. You know, I don't see what the problem is here. So if I know for a fact I'm going to go somewhere on in the summertime or in December or in um, what's that thing called with the with the turkey um, honey day? I forgot that name. What is that thing called? That holiday? Oh, my goodness. I don't remember. But the turkey day. OK, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. There you go. So if I know I'm going to be traveling around that time, I know it's going to be busy. I buy my tickets, for example, even three, six months in advance. However, if I know when I'm going to travel is going to be like an off season, nobody's traveling, then I don't really care for planning. But overall, if I know I'm buying my stuff in advance to save money. And that's something my mom taught me. I've been buying tickets for my family since I was like three years old. Like my uncle, my mom, they basically always have me scanning tickets. So I had to learn that stuff very early on. Number five, I don't buy new furniture ever. I had a friend, okay? She's still my friend. And basically, she was like, Tommy, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. This costs this. I was like, yo, just buy that stuff you use. You can save so much money. And she was like, no, I'm not buying it used. And then I was like, yo, check Facebook Marketplace. There is a lot of cool stuff there. All of a sudden, she calls me and says, Tommy, I just bought a table used for $500, but it goes for like $2,000, okay? I was like, good. You bought your table. You like your table. You got a sweet deal on it. Great. So all my furniture, my sofa, my, by the way, my sofa costs like around $3,000, $4,000, and my dining table is very expensive. My TV stand is not that expensive. My TV is also used. And I got all of that for less than $1,000, okay? And it's combined, it's worth at least like five, $6,000, okay? But you get sweet deals when you check for discounts. I don't buy this furniture stuff brand new. It makes absolutely no sense. Number six, okay, guys, this is even crazier. I try never to spend beyond my budget. That includes, for example, dates, events, dinners, friends, hangouts. I have a budget for all this stuff. And it kind of feels like it's very methodical, but I like doing this. You know why? Because before, whenever I went out with friends and I would spend money I didn't have to basically do these activities, I would always come back home and feel guilty. But if I know for a fact this money I'm spending is a part of the budget, I don't feel guilty about it. You know what I mean? So I like to have a budget in place. And my budget helps me. It doesn't hurt me. So whenever I go, for example, out, unless I'm hanging out with friends, and all of a sudden I have a budget of like $30, $50, and then I want something that's like an extra $10, I'm like, okay, that's, that's, that's no big deal. $10, no big deal. But at least I have my budget to guide me. Because if I go out without a budget, then what's going to become of me? Okay? That's a problem. Now, <laughs> now, number seven, even if I have the money, I won't spend it. Okay? So for example, I like to name my money into six accounts. 
You have money, for example, for emergencies, for debt payments, for investments, for expenses, for fun, and for charity. If I have money for investments, there is no way I'm going to spend that money on fun, even if the money is there, because that money has a name. So even though, for example, I might want an iPhone, I, want my, I might want to travel, if the money's not there, I'm not spending it if it's not for that reason. I'd rather invest my money, do what else I'm going to do with that money, and then just save up to get what I actually want. That's the idea. I've always had that mindset. Number eight, and the final thing that people call me cheap for, before I get into the things I spend my money on, um, is basically, I bought my car used. Everyone told me, don't buy a used car. They're trouble. They're a problem. They're going to break down. Oh my gosh. If you buy a new car, the minute you drive it, it becomes used, effectively. So you're telling me that every person that has a used car just doesn't take care of it? Only you take care of your car? The answer is that that argument never made sense to me. So when I bought my used 2014 Toyota Prius for around 32% of what retail price was, and I put in additional money to get a new battery, get new wheels, get new brakes and all this stuff, I was in for like 42 to 48% basically in this car. And I got basically a crazy discount and I got a very, very good car. The answer is I buy my stuff used. I use Logic. I don't use that nonsense, okay? That's my idea. Now, here's what I believe, and here's where my mindset comes into play. I believe no matter what, the money is going to get spent. If you live your life and you don't spend your money, your children will spend it. Somebody's gonna spend it, okay? So my idea is I wanna spend my money on things that are gonna benefit me so that I can spend my money on the things I just basically want without me having to worry about what am I gonna do next, okay? So it's about delaying gratification and that's how I play my game, okay? Now, here are the things I spend my money on that some people say I'm a little bit too frivolous with, okay? Meaning that I basically spend it for no reason. Now, when I told my grandpa I spend money to have somebody come to my house every two weeks and basically clean the whole thing, he was like, why would he do that? Why not do it yourself? The answer is, Grandpa, because I don't want to spend two, three, four hours cleaning my home when I can basically spend that time making more money, right? So that, to me, is an investment. Number two, I spent extra money on organic food. My mom hated this concept. She didn't like it because it was like, this chicken is a dollar, Tommy. This one's three dollars. This is meat, and this is meat. The answer is, no, Mom, that's a dollar now, but later, that's going to be problems with your health. So that mindset starts to shift in my home, too. So I pay extra for organic. What I put in my body is very important for me. Number three, I spend over $1,000 a year on education. Education to me is priceless. Whatever I put into education is going to give me a positive return. If I buy a book for $40, $50, $100, I haven't found one for $100 yet, but the Charlie Munger book, the blue book right there, that cost me around $80 or $90, I think it was. And if I find just one idea in there, that idea might make me $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, okay? My whole life changed with a $10 book. So education to me is always worth the expense. Also, I spend to pay the people that work for me a good wage. One thing I never want to be, I know someone, right, that he has a lot of employees. And all his employees always complain about the wage they give him because he, never, he always tries to shortchange his employees. I don't like that. I like to be able to offer, for example, the people who work for me a competitive wage because I think that is reasonable, right? To pay the people that work for you a good wage. Now, number, whatever the number is, I spend extra money <laughs> to have a comfortable home. So when I was buying this home, people told me, Tommy, it's kind of expensive, okay? Maybe you don't wanna buy this one, okay? But to me, this matters, right? The home I buy matters. So when I bought this home, and by the way, I didn't buy a crazy expensive home, but I bought a home I felt comfortable in. When people come to visit, they'll be like, is this too big? What do you have? I, I like where I live. I like this stuff, okay? So I spend my money on my piece to be comfortable and all those things. That's why I say personal finance is personal. You can't just go based on what people think. You got to go based on yourself. And what I believe, again, is if I spent that money that $800 on that and those clothes and that phone and all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. I probably wouldn't be able to spend money on these things today because these things to me make my life a lot more enjoyable and a lot more happy. Now, I do have to admit something, guys, okay? What I'm starting to see is the closer I get to my version of personal financial assurance or freedom, whatever you want to call it, right? I start to notice that I become a lot more lenient with the way I spend my money. So what it takes to get to the party and what it takes to stay there are two different things. 
In the beginning, I had to make a lot of sacrifices to arrive, but once you arrive, you don't have to keep making the same sacrifices. Kind of like, for example, like the gym. To get to the level that I am right now, for example, in muscle and efficiency, all this stuff, I had to put in a lot of work because I was super fat. I had to make a lot of sacrifices, okay? But today, I can go to the gym three times a week, run five times a week, and then boom, I can basically maintain everything I have. It's not the same level of effort, but it's because I worked so hard to get here. So just like, for example, Warren Buffett, he spends extra money to take a private jet wherever he wants to save him time or whatever. The answer is, whenever I'm buying my tickets now, if I want to spend $40 to sit, for example, in the front with some extra legroom, I spend it. If I want to buy, for example, an iPhone or an Apple Watch, I might buy it. If I want to buy something fancy, for example, when I go to a restaurant, I might buy it. Because at the end of the day, the money is going to be spent. And the best thing about money is that it enables you to have a better lifestyle in a sense. It enables you to spend money on your friends and your family, to give to charity and all these things. That's the whole purpose of the whole thing, right? To um, donate to your church. So that to me is very, very important. So overall, to arrive and to maintain are two very different things. Now, I'm not telling you tomorrow I'm going to be taking a private jet, but you know, it's okay that if you want to buy something for yourself that's nice, if you have the money, if you've done the homework already, if you've done the hard work, it's okay for you to have that, okay? It's kind of like the person that spends years working out and there's a donut and they don't eat it because it's against their diet. Bro, you've been working out like super hard. You put in the work. One donut is not going to kill you. Enjoy it, right? Guys, thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. And again, we're going to care about what people say, but it's very important that the number one person that you should be listening to is your goals and your mind and what you actually have to actually accomplish. But the minds of people cannot be changed until usually they see the effects of the work you've been putting in. And that takes a while. And if you get that, it'll change your life too. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified, comment down below. And by the way, as you can see, I still don't have the iPhone. And I still don't have the watch because it's still very hard to commit to getting those things, okay? But it's important. It's important to treat yourself, okay? Now, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified, comment down below. Um, wealth, so I know you made it all the way to the end of the video. Um, on top of that, here's a video. Here's my face. Follow me on Instagram, Ty Bryson. And as always, long-term team, officially out.